In this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to build collars with a dubbing loop and a bulldog clip. You can also use uh, Mark Pettigene uh, magic clips as well. So the first thing I'm going to show you is just the difference uh, between using kind of a traditional collar and then using the dubbing loop. So a traditional collar, you can either use rabbit or a feather, like a CDC feather, and both of those uh, materials have a problem. They have a stem or a hide, and the stem or the hide uh, take up a lot of bulk and a lot of room and are not very clean and easy to uh, tie with. I'll kind of show you what I mean. So I go in to tie in the rabbit here, and you can see uh, most of the bulk when I tie in the rabbit, it's all hide. Uh, I'm not really tying in uh, any of the fibers. I'm tying in the hide itself. Then when I go wrap the material, you can see that mostly what I'm wrapping is the hide. We've got a little bit of wispy material here, but the majority of the bulk is this big hide. And each time I wrap, uh, the hide wants to build up, slip, slide, uh, roll around. And the real problem with uh, working with hide is it, uh, it takes up so much of your the room on a shank, it doesn't leave much room for the fur. Uh, and the fur is really the reason that we're using it. So you can see here that collar is not very thick. Uh, it's kind of got a bad hair day. So what you have to do is you have to wrap up over the hide and get the collar uh, to lay back. And that that is a problem with both just regular zonker strips and cross-cut strips, is it just you're tying in a hide and very bulky. You can see here how big and messy the head is. So trying to finish off a head on a fly uh, that you have hide in is very difficult. So what I'm going to show you is how to do it with a dubbing loop. I'm just going to take my thread forward. I'm going to zoom out here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Raise up the vise. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a little small dubbing loop here. Just make a loop with my thread. And then you're going to want to use a dubbing twister. I like the split wire kind because it leaves the uh, loop open for you. Then you're going to choose your material. And of course, we're using rabbit in this scenario, but it can be used with CDC. It can also be used with deer hair. Basically, anything that can be jammed in a dubbing loop, even synthetic materials, you can use this technique on. So I'm just going to take my rabbit, and I'm just going to kind of stroke some of the fibers back so they're all standing up off the hide. I'm just going to take my bulldog clip. I'm going to sneak it in there and just clip the material in there. And then what you can do is you can fine tune it. So what we want is a little bit of room in between the clip and the hide. That way when I go to trim the fur away from the hide, I still have a little bit of the fur exposed. That way I can trap it in my dubbing loop. So I just take a long bladed scissor, like a hair scissor, and I'm just going to trim very cl as close to the hide as I can, kind of leaving as much of that fur exposed. Then all I'm going to do is just open up my dubbing loop, sneak that rabbit fur in there. And I'm going to pull down with my dubbing twister. That will trap the fur. And then I can let go with my bulldog clip. Now, if your fur is a little uneven, you can just kind of give it a little tap in your dubbing loop. That'll even up the butt ends. You want to get those butt ends as close to the dubbing loop as you can. That way you don't have too many of the butt ends kind of sticking out the front. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my left hand here and I'm going to pinch the thread right below all that material. I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Basically all I've done is just pinch the material or pinch the thread right below the material. I've still got a lot of room here with my dubbing twister. All I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-twist all this thread. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm pre-twisting it, so right when I let go, it's just going to spin all this material uh, all at once, rather than having to uh, sit here and twist it one twist at a time. Uh, that way, it keeps some of the material from getting trapped. Uh, this, the way I'm doing it now, by pre-twisting, it'll spin it all at once, and nothing will get trapped. And you'll still want to spin a few more times once you've let go of that spin, just to make sure everything is in there securely. And I always get a little bit of material kind of at the tip that gets trapped. You can kind of just pluck it out of there 
before you can continue. I put in this other collar here at the back that's kind of interfering with what I'm doing. Then you can just take a pair of hackle pliers and just grab your dubbing loop. And the last thing I usually do is I just take a dubbing brush and I just brush through the material here and that'll help kind of keep some of those fibers from staying trapped. This will pluck them all out of there and kind of fluff everything up a little bit. Then you can just simply take the entire dubbing loop I probably need to go back a little ways here and just start wrapping it around your hook here and with each wrap you just coax the material back you can see here how dense uh, this collar is but it's got no bulk it literally has no bulk just because uh, the stem of what we're doing is thread it has no hide uh, no quill no stem uh, none of that so it's not bulky at all and I can literally go all the way up to the eye as close as I want you would not be able to do this with that hide because that hide is so bulky you would crowd the eye you'd end up with a big giant lump of uh, hide right at the eye of the, the fly here so you can simply just tie it all off you can see how few wraps I took there just to tie it off compared to what I did with the hide. And I'll zoom in here and kind of show you the difference. At a distance they might look pretty similar but when we get in here and actually look you can see here this collar that I did here with the, the dubbing loop is very very dense. You can see how even it is. Perfectly even coverage. My collar here at the back not very even. There's hide exposed. There's kind of little pieces that are hanging off the back. Uh, so it's not a very even collar. That's even with taking some wraps back up onto it. The front collar is much more even. It's actually more easy to deal with uh, than using the hide. Uh, it may take a little bit more work to do, uh, but you can kind of see here how it kind of wobbles. Really short here, nice and long there. That's because uh, that hide likes to slip and slide around the shank of the hook. You will not get that uh, with that dubbing loop technique. So it's actually pretty easy to do. You do it two or three times, you kind of get the gist of it. The first time, uh, you have to get used to kind of using the clip and trapping it. Uh, and the real trick is to pinch that thread right below the material and pre-twist all that to thread in the dubbing loop and then let go rather than trying to twist it one by one. So that is how you build collars with a dubbing loop and a bulldog clip. A uh, fun little technique and a good little trick to have in your fly tying arsenal.